All right, so this is asking you to find the sine ratio of angle A for this first triangle. So y'all know sine of an angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay, and then do the same thing for B in the second triangle. So that's opposite over hypotenuse. And we're supposed to solve both of these for H. So the first one, we multiply both sides by B. The second one, we multiply both sides by A, <clears throat> little a. All right, so what do you see is true about these two equations here? Well, there was, sorry, let me rephrase that. Um, both of these equations are solved for H. Now, if you have two equations that are equal to, a sa to the same variable, what can we do with those two equations? We can set them equal to each other. Now, why on earth would we want to do that? Well, what we're looking at right here, we've got two right triangles. Well, not everything in the real world is made up of right triangles. But, um, for example, something like this, if we, what I've done here is I purposefully uh, made <clears throat> that perpendicular height there H for both triangles and I tried to make it look like they were the same height so that I could squeeze those two triangles together to make a bigger overall triangle okay triangle ABC here now this triangle is not a right triangle okay I know that there's a little right angle right here but that right angle is not one of the three angles of the triangle okay ABC is not a right triangle, but we can break it down into right triangles and apply trig. What we're going to look at today <clears throat> is we're going to be able to solve scaling. Okay, if you've never heard that term before, you should have, but if you haven't, uh, I should have written that in red. Uh, scaling means that no sides are the same and you don't have a right angle. Okay, no sides the same. And there's no right angle, okay, which is the only type, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that's the only type of, that should make it much better. Oh, that's okay. Oh. Yeah, there you go. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, anyways, we've only been able to solve right triangles with our trick, right? There had to be a right angle involved. We couldn't do anything with triangles that didn't have right angles. We're going to be able to use trig with these triangles that don't have right angles. And when I say solve, I mean, of course, to find all the angles and all the sides. So here is the exact same picture that I just had up. I just took that middle portion out. Okay, I took that middle segment there out of it. So it's a little more obvious that this is not a right triangle. So <clears throat> I'm going to take the two expressions that we had. Um, that H was equal to A sine of B, and that H was equal to B sine of A. Pulling those back out. As I mentioned before, since they're both equal to H, I can set them equal to each other. And for the sake of having the same letters on the same side, I'm going to... Um, first of all, divide both sides by B. So we've got A sine of big B. Remember, capital letters represent angles. Lowercase letters represent sides. And then I'm also going to divide both sides by little a so that we end up with this ratio that the sine of angle B over the measure of side B is equal to the sine of angle A divided by the measure of side A. <laughs> yeah, you may be thinking, well, what about four side C and angle C? Where do they come into play? I could do a similar thing with angle C and side C. I could do it either with A or B and I would end up with the exact same relationship. So, <clears throat> this is what we call the law of sines. Okay, this is what we call the law of sines. Um, we 
We've already talked about A and B, but it's also equal to the sine of angle C over the measure of side C. So you have to know this. Okay? You have to know this. This is the law of sines. Nick, was there a question like that on the ACT on the other one or something like that? Okay. Sometimes they have one on there. Sometimes um, the Pythagorean theorem has to do with the law of cosines. <clears throat> okay, so um, yes, we don't normally have two equal signs. That there's no such thing as well. There, there are such things. <laughs> but usually we only have one equal sign in equation, right? We don't normally set three things that equal to each other. Um, the reason why it's arranged this way is because you can work with any pair that you want to. You can pair up A and B, you can pair up A and C, you can pair up B and C. It just depends on the information that you're given, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So, if we are told to solve this triangle, A, B, and C, and we are told that angle A is 36 degrees, angle B is 48 degrees, and side A is 8. We need to find sides B and C and angle C. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and label my picture with what they gave me. And just a little reminder. We always put the side opposite its angle. It has the same letter. So the side 8 goes across from the 36 degrees. The side of the angle B is going to be across from the 48 degrees. And then our other angle on that other side, of course, is C. You didn't necessarily have to set up the triangle this way. Okay? You could have had A, B, and C in different places. <clears throat> but then just drawn and labeled it accordingly. Okay, now, if I'm trying to solve for side B, side C, and angle C, what is the easiest piece to figure out? Angle C, right? Because it's the third angle in a triangle. All we have to do is subtract that from 180. <clears throat> and we're good to go. Okay. So 96 degrees is this angle up here, almost a right angle. Let me do a different color since I solved for that one. A little bit more than a right angle, okay? So, <clears throat> excuse me, now here's the way that I always approach these. They gave me angle A and side A, so I know that I'm going to use that with my law of sines, okay? I'm going to write that down first. From there, I'm going to use the other piece that they gave me. They gave me angle B was 48 degrees. Side, so that means side B is going to be the first thing that I solve for. Now, what do you do when you have a fraction equal to a fraction or a ratio equal to a ratio? Cross multiply. Very good. You do cross multiply. So we have B times the sine of 36 is equal to 8 times the sine of 48. Now, I personally prefer that you save the calculator for the very end. Okay? Don't, don't get decimal values for this yet. Solve for your variable completely and then type it into your calculator. So to solve for B, we then need to divide both sides by the sine of 36 degrees. Okay, now, number one, make sure your calculator is in degree mode because our angles are degrees. If your calculator has been reset, it is in radian mode. Okay, um, <clears throat> now, there's more than one thing in the numerator, so we need to put parentheses around it. 8 sine of 48. We need two sets of parentheses right there because the first one closes it on the angle. The second one closes the numerator. Divided by 
The denominator is the sine of 36. You don't have to put parentheses around that. Okay. <clears throat> so that tells us that side B is approximately 10 point, let's just do one decimal place, okay, 10.1. <clears throat> Bless you. Now, we could do the law of signs again. But, well, no, we have to do the, sorry, we do have to do the law of signs again. I almost just did the Pythagorean theorem, but Pythagorean theorem only works for right triangles. Almost screwed up again. Okay. So, let's do the law of signs again. Sine of 36 degrees over 8 is equal to the sine of this time. We're looking for side C, so we have to use angle C, which is 96 degrees. So when we cross multiply, C sine of 36 degrees is equal to 8 sine of 96 degrees. And we've got to divide by, bless you, the sine of 36. So 8 sine 96 divided by the sine of 36 is 13.5. Okay, a quick check here. Something that you can do, and I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this back when we started with triangles, that the uh, angles and the sides are uh, kind of proportionate to each other. So the smallest angle is across from the smallest side, or vice versa, however you want to phrase it. So our smallest angle is 36. The question is, is our smallest side 8? It is. Okay. Um, our middle angle was 48. Middle side was 10 point one, biggest angle, biggest side. Okay, do that. You will catch some. You will catch some mistakes if you do that quick check right there. Okay, so do not use right triangle trig. Do not use the Pythagorean theorem. These are not right triangles. Okay, so in that case, we had two angles and one side. Another scenario we may be given is one angle and two sides. Okay, one angle and two sides. So we are told here that angle A is 26.3 degrees, side A is 7, and side B is 6. Now, tell me really quickly, before we saw for angle B, how should it compare to 26.3 degrees? It should be less than 26.3 degrees because angle B is across from the side that's length 6. Angle A is across from the side length 7, so B should be smaller than A, even though my picture is not drawn that way. Guess what? Pictures can be deceiving. So again, I always use my given information as much as possible. Now, usually with the law of signs, that's not as big of a deal. Um, but when we get to the law of cosines, you've got more room for error. So I encourage you to use the given information as much as possible. Okay? Yes. Yes. Cross multiply, just like we did before. But what's different this time? We're solving for an angle. We're not solving for a side. So we've got to divide by the 7 first. And I'm going to keep, well, let's go ahead and crunch those numbers. Okay. We've got 6 sine of 26.3. Make sure you close your parentheses after you finish typing in the angle, okay? So that's point three seven 